Is Arturia Pigments worth the price? That is what we are going to be talking about today. So go ahead and leave your opinion in the comments below. Do you think that it is worth it. If we haven't met yet, my name is Brett Pontecorvo. I am the face behind LiveKeyboardist.com, where I help live keyboard players thrive using computers in a live context for performance. So before we talk about this too much, we need to figure out kind of what the, what the parameters are that we're going to judge Arturia pigments by. So the things that I think make a synthesizer good or the things that make it valuable is, is it flexible? Is it easy to use? And is it stable? Um, now, a lot of times I will choose to resample something rather than use a synthesizer live. But if your synth is lightweight enough and your computer is beefy enough, sometimes you can run live with a synth. So these are the parameters we're going to be judging Arturia pigments by. Now, for a long time, I was from the camp of Ableton comes with everything that you need to do anything that third-party synths can do. However, I downloaded a free trial of Arturia Pigments, and I would say within two or three days, I was completely sold on it, and I'm going to show you why. So let's take a look at Arturia Pigments a little bit just in the program to start with. So here is what Pigments looks like when you open it up, and this is just sort of the uh, default setting here. It's got two different synth engines, uh, so right off to bat, it's kind of got more in one place than you would get in Ableton. And then it also has three different type of engines. You've got your analog engine, uh, which is sort of more modeled after a basic keyboard. You've got your wavetable, and you've got your sample. So let's pause right there. Pigments is three different types of synthesizers all built into one. You've got an analog synth, kind of like Ableton's native synthesizer analog. You've got wavetable, much like... Ableton's native wavetable, and you've got a granular synth. And this they call it sample, but it gives you some uh, granular options here so you can really morph um, your different sounds and your different options. So it's doing a lot in one synth. Now, do you have access to all three of these outside of Arturia in Ableton? Absolutely, you do. However, I think Arturia is going to win here some points for usability and for stability because happening all in one ecosystem is making it a little bit more stable. Whereas if I were using an instrument rack with several different devices in it, it's going to take up a little bit more power. Um, so stability happening there. Um, as far as ease of use goes, I really think that if you're familiar with any type of a synth, uh, you're going to be okay with this. So if we just go over here to new preset, it starts with this wavetable and... volume here. It's really a very simple uh, way that things work here. Um, you can see whichever parameters are active right here, um, and you can adjust your envelopes, LFOs, and we'll get to these in a second here. But if I wanted to make the attack longer, it's sort of the same uh, way that any other synthesizer would work. Not too much different here, but it is nice to look at. It feels good to use. Um, and you'll notice that there's sort of a blue line here um, just going around to show you how much um, this has been engaged. Um, now, I actually think this really shines a lot in just kind of an easy mapping situation. So if I wanted to kind of morph this, anytime I hover over um, a parameter, a little plus sign appears, and I can click on it, and I can easily assign um, any parameter that I would like um, to control those things. So if I want an LFO, if I want an envelope, whatever it is, um, you can go ahead and do that. And this is also something that can be done in any synth. Um, something that I really like about pigments, though, is I can assign um, parameters in here, different uh, envelopes and uh, LFOs, to control each other. So if I were to uh, choose my gate source, um, I could choose LFO1 as my gate source for envelope 2. Um, and then I could assign this envelope maybe to, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, a, a resonance situation here. So if I click the plus sign and I assign envelope two. So then I've got an envelope that is being controlled by an LFO. And you can have this controlled by lots of different things, right? Um, so you can have it controlled by your sequence or you can have it be controlled by your keyboard, by any FL LFO, or by any of these random 
Um, so that routing option, I think, is really nice. Um, it's a cool thing to have access to. You can also easily go in here and see where things are mapped. So since we have this mapped here, um, you can see that it is indeed happening, um, kind of give you a preview into those things which is nice. All right, let's look at the uh, analog setup here. So uh, this is great right off the bat. It gives you three oscillators, which you don't necessarily get in any of Ableton's built-in synths unless you want to count the sub bass. But um, in this case, we do get three uh, different oscillators with your standard uh, different waveforms here. Um, and now it's a bit loud. Um, and it's really easy to work with, which is opinion. So you can always come in and change your course tuning, which is nice. If we wanted to have our pulse width modulated slightly by an LFO, we could do that. If I wanted to adjust the rate of the LFO, I could come in here and drop this down. You can have it be in hertz so it's a little bit more detailed. Um, and I think the thing I really want you to get here is that as we're doing this, it's actually very easy to navigate around, and it feels good. And if you notice my CPU meter up here, we're only at 11% right now, um, which is pretty stable in my opinion. Cool. So we also have our fine-tuning knobs, which is pretty standard. Again, is it doing anything super different? Well, maybe not. But it is easy to work with. Um, you've got a built-in unison over here with three different modes. Which you do get in uh, Wavetable, um, but it's nice unison. It's a little bit much there. But that sounds real nice. And this is just one engine, friends. And really, we've been at this now for a couple of minutes. We've created something pretty cool. Um, so we could go into engine two here, and this is by default set to sample. So I'm gonna leave it there just to kind of show you a little bit of what that is. Turn this up so you can hear it. So right now, what's going on is we've just got a grand piano sample loaded. Um, and it's just being played across whatever keys you're hitting. Um, kind of a standard sample playback. But uh, you can really start to warp this and mangle it a little bit with the um, granular controls. So depending on how fast the size is, you'll get more or less of the different things controlling the density. Um, I think it's fun to adjust the pitch and the direction just a touch, maybe some shape here. got kind of an interesting sound so if you listen to those things together whoa turn that volume back down and maybe we send this to filter too so could i create this in ableton without using pigments, absolutely I could. However, again, now I'm up at 22%. It's still pretty uh, stable, pretty low, and I would be okay performing in the 22 range. Now, something else that's worth checking out here is that you actually have several different uh, spaces for samples. So I could go in and load, um, how about a classical guitar sample? Let's see what that is. which is nice. And then you have some options for um, how you want it to, uh, 
to choose which sample. So it'll jump back and forth, which I think is nice. Um, and then we can turn granular back on. And now it's gonna sort of make a granular situation out of both of these samples. Pretty cool stuff. And again, we're just sort of scratching the surface here. Now, the other thing we have to definitely talk about is the effects area. It's pretty great to have built-in effects. Again, being someone who has used mostly all Ableton native devices, having some built-in effects isn't the worst. Um, I probably will still use Ableton effects for... Um, performance modulation, which is something I talk about a lot in my sound design courses. We have to really be careful as keyboard players not to try and use the built-in features to perform with. Um, but if we go in here, uh, check out their... Oh, reverb's already pulled up. How about that? Um, so it's, it's a pretty decent sounding reverb. Also got a built-in compressor um, that I kind of like. And let's see if I can show that to you. So again, nothing necessarily groundbreaking here, um, but what is groundbreaking is that it's all in one place and it's pretty easy um, to work with. Uh, so let's have a listen, what do we have here? to that layered with some piano. It's a pretty decent sound and it's very easy to work with. Now, could I recreate this using a wavetable in an instrument rack with a granular synth and another one? Absolutely. But having it all in one place isn't the worst. So do I think that Arturia Pigments is worth the money? Absolutely yes. I think you should definitely check this out if you're looking for a better synth or not necessarily a better synth, but just one that keeps everything in one place. This is definitely something that will be in my arsenal. If you got value from this video, make sure you go ahead and click that like and subscribe button, and I will see you next week.